Hey guys, we are back with another code.org 2324 updated unit three animations and games lesson. Let's get right to it. All right, we're on bubble one. We're learning about variables and it says here, predict. Read the code below and make a prediction. Where will the circle be drawn? And what will happen if you change the number in line one? All right, where will the circle be drawn? So x position is the name of this variable. And it gets the value of 50. So down here on line three in our code, we have x position 350y, 100 wide, 100 high. Right, And so basically variables are labeled, right? This one is named X position and it uses what's called camel case. And camel case is basically like you squish uh, two or more words together and then you just capitalize each uh, first letter of the second word, third word, fourth word, whatever. So in this case, X is kind of like the first word there and then position being the second word, so you capitalize that P. All right, now that you know a little bit about camel case, and just to illustrate, right, what does a camel look like? They have these humps, right? This one's a perfect example. So looking at this guy, look at that face. All right, looking at this guy right here, over here, either way, right there or right there. I don't care where you look. All right, it's got the two humps, right? So it's called camel case. Where are we recording? Right here? No, here. We're recording right here. All right. So it's called camel case because those letters in the second, third word, uh, however many words you have in there, are capitalized like a camel sum. All right. Where will the circle be drawn? So because we're using that variable right here in the x value spot, X position, X position, then we've told the computer that the variable X position gets a value of 50. So every time we type out X position in any spot, we could type it out here, out here, wherever, it's going to be a value of 50. So knowing that and knowing what we know about X being left to right and Y being up and down, zero, zero up here, 400, 400 way down here, we know that X having a value of 50, so it's going to be this far over. And then the y value at 350, right? So the circle is going to be bottom left corner, right? Run it. Ta-da! It's bottom left corner. Variables work like magic. Let's move forward. Let's go to bubble two. On bubble two, all right, this level follows a video that you may have watched with your class. If you missed the video, you can watch it in the help and tips tab. Uh, help and tips right here. You can click on the video and watch the video if you so choose. All right, we're making another prediction. In which corner of the screen will the circle be drawn? Well, let's see. We can click the show grid box. Gives us that helpful hint again. And X position is 300. So 300 X, we're going to be over here. And then 100 Y, we're going to be right here. I just happened to put my cursor on the right spot. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, and it doesn't matter what you name your variable. You can name your variable Jim. You can name it Susie. It doesn't matter uh, what you name it. It's still going to get that value. Every time you use it, that value will be applied. What's important, though, with the naming is that it makes some sense. So X position gets 300. What's the Y gets 100, right? So X position we know is 300. So basically we know that this is 300. And what's the Y is 100 based on the values that they were given at the top of our code. So 
Um, what's it asking? In which corner of the screen will it be drawn? Top right. Run. There it is. Top right. Finish. Continue. All right. Changing variables. We're going to update the values of the variables below so that the ellipse is drawn in the bottom center of the screen, like shown here. So do this. It says change the values of the variables to update the position of the ellipse. You do not need to add any new blocks to your code. You are just updating the blocks that are already in the code area, in the workspace. So uh, we're updating values. It's the same as what it was before. We don't need to change these names anywhere. All we're doing is updating the values. So if we want it to be bottom center, uh, so X would need a value of 200, and Y is going to need a value of, uh, let's say, 300. Then we run it. There it is, bottom center, just like in the picture. Let's move on to bubble four. All right, bubble four. Bubble four. We're waiting for you, bubble four. All right. Debug, all right, naming variables. So uh, before we get started here, one of the important things to know about the coding on code.org is that if you have errors in your code and you're looking at it as text and you click show blocks, it's not going to let you show the blocks. It's just going to be like, no, there are too many errors, bro. There's too many errors. You got problems, bro. You got problems. All right. This program has multiple errors caused by bad variable labels. The errors prevent the program from being viewed in block mode, so the code is in text. Before, but not before, below are a few rules for naming variables. Labels can't have spaces. These are the rules, folks. I don't make the rules. You got to abide by the rules. Labels can't have spaces. So right here, right away, take those spaces out of size of circle. Anywhere else you see size of circle, take out those spaces. So they're all squished together. All right. And then what else is a problem? Labels can't start with a number. So we'll, instead of dimension or one dimension, we'll just call it dimension. And then uh, finally, get out of my way. Get out of my way. And then finally, uh, Capitalization and spelling must be exactly the same. So let's look at Y location. We've got a lowercase Y, capital L. And down here, we've got a uppercase Y, capital L. So let's backspace that Y, put in a lowercase Y. Looks like we just took care of all of the problems. We corrected the errors. So if I click show blocks now, it should switch to blocks. And it did, right? And now I can click run. And there you go. There you go. It works. And so, uh, yeah, I hope you learned something there. So there are rules. Let's go back over those. Labels can't have spaces. Labels can't start with a number. And the capitalization and spelling must be the same in your labels. All right, let's finish. Let's continue. On bubble five, we're learning about how to use variables multiple times. So this program has only one variable called pedal size, but it uses that label eight different times in the code. You can see them down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It uses eight times from line 10 to line 13 on these ellipse blocks. And that makes it easy to quickly make lots of changes to how the picture is going to be drawn. So if I change this one thing in my code just by putting a different number right here on line two for where we're declaring that variable and naming it or giving it a label, every time we use that variable, right, all we got to do is update the number here, and it'll update the number down here everywhere. All right. So if I run this right now, we can see that uh, we're trying to make a flower, I'm assuming, since we're talking about petal size, flower petals. You see where I'm going with this? So that doesn't look like a flower at the moment, but I see that they were going for 
a flower. So let's try changing that to 70. And that's going to make each of these ellipses, these four red ones, bigger. They're still not touching, but that's that looks pretty good. Let's get them to just barely touch. So let's do two pixels bigger than that. Now they're touching. It looks like a weird flower. Uh, all right, I'm happy with it. So you just try to find the size that makes the most sense and then uh, you know compare your answer with someone else. If you did the same thing as me and the next kid did the same thing as me, we're all gonna have flowers that look exactly the same and that's kind of boring. If you want to, you can change the color. If I change it to green, you can barely see it because it's right on top of a green background. If I change it to blue, there you go. And then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Play around with it, see what you can make. Bubble six. Ooh, practice, bu practice bubble. Let's go. Changing variable value. Let's go for it. We're on, where are we? Bubble six, A. All right. We're debugging. So this program uses the variable circle size, and you can see that here on line one, to control the width and height of a circle. If you make the circle big enough, it's going to fill up the entire screen as in the picture on the right. Change the value assigned to circle size so that the circle fills the entire screen. So right now, it has a value of 400, and it's used for width and height on this ellipse block. All right, so obviously 400 is not big enough. It's 400 wide, 400 high. We need to make that bigger. Let's try 450, see if that fills up the whole display. It does not. Let's try 500. Still doesn't. We still have these corners. So let's try 550. Still doesn't fill it up. OK. Let's see, 575. I bet that will do it. Yeah, that will do it. 575 fills it up. You can also go uh, kind of wonky with it and just say like 1,500 pixels. And then that fills it up too. But it's going to be way bigger than your display size, unnecessarily large. But, you know, we'll, we'll leave it. It's fun. It's fun. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. 6B. Do -do -do -do. I like that, like, the sense of accomplishment that you get from the da -da 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 every time you finish a bubble. All right. Debugging again. The program below is supposed to create the image on the right. Okay. You can argue that's an image sure <laughs> but it's not working correctly can you fix it so when i run it nothing shows up i get an error message in the debug console down here at the bottom and it says error is on line six oops we can't figure out what x is uh oh do you see it do you see the problem i see the problem i see the problem all right we've got a lowercase x and a capital x so backspace lowercase x reset run Okay, that's showing up. But now in the debug console again, error on line seven. Here's the indicator. We can't figure out what Y is. That's because this is a capital Y and this is a lowercase Y. So sensitive. All right. Reset run. Boom. We got it. It works. All right. Oh, yeah, it probably would have helped maybe a little bit. Update the code to match the image. You do not need to add any box, of course. Uh, variable name rules, right? They've got to match. That was the whole deal with this one. And lowercase and uppercase really matters in coding. All right. Another da 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 da, and we're on our way to 6C. We're working with a teddy bear head, apparently. So back in the 80s, 90s, when I was a kid, since I'm, you know, an old, old guy, the, uh, we had the Care Bears TV show. There was the Gummy Bears TV show. When the theme song for that gets stuck in my head sometimes, we are the Gummy Bears. All right, moving on. The program below has been started and several variables have been created, but none of them are being used. Now... Uh, okay, so we've got three variables here, but none of them are being used down here on any of these drawing blocks. 
All right. Can you update the code to use the variables instead of specific numbers? Okay. Update the code to use the variables. You do not need to add any blocks. We're only changing values of the blocks already in the code. All right. See, try changing the values of the variables at the top of the screen. So ear size, let's find all of the 80s. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to control C, ear size from line one. I'm going to find all the 80s in the code and I'm going to do control V, control V, control V, control V. And I don't see any other 80s. And then let's run the code. All right. And then eye size is set to 15. So really this isn't making any changes. We're pretty much just making sure we're using the variables we created. All right, so center, let's copy that. And every time we see the number 200, we're going to put in center. Control V, Control V. Control V, Control V, Control V. Do you see any more? There's one. Any more two, 200s? I hope I didn't miss one. Let's run it. Yeah, the, I mean, nothing about the bear changed, but our code changed. We just took our variable labels and pasted them where they needed to be. Necessary mm, for this size of a program, mm, but you're learning how it works, right? Becoming a better programmer every day with Mr. Decker. All right, let's add some variables. Sweet. So we finally get to add our own variables. Debug, adding variables. Something strange in the neighborhood. Who are you going to call? Mr. Decker? Maybe. All right. I can help you with your code. Right? If you got ghosts, I don't know if I can help you with that. Something strange happened to this program. All of the variable names at the top of the code got erased. Luckily, the variable names are still being used in the rest of the program. Can you fix the program by putting the co correct variable names in the correct spots at the top of the code? Possibly. All right. So let's run this and nothing happens. It's got too many errors, too many problems. All right, read through the code and identify the four variables being used in the program. So let's identify the variables. We have color one. Uh, what? Okay, we have color one. We've got size, which I imagine is this one. And what else do we have? Let's see. Let's make some room. Size and color one. Color two, color three. Oh, okay. I see. I see. I see. I see. All right. So let's make this size. We'll do color one, color two, and color three. Just like that. We run it. And... That's not right. Okay, so we want this. So let's see. So color one is green. So we want this to be color one, where the orange showed up. We want the where the red is to be color. Wait, no. I'm, am I doing this weird? Yes, I am. So green, I want to be color three. Boom. Red, I want to be color one. And orange, I want to be color two. The order they put this in is confusing. There we go. Red, yellow, green. Or red, orange, green. Right. Okay. Finish. <laughs> Continue. Oh, it actually looks like a real red light instead of something that would make people not have a good day while they're trying to drive their car. Okay. 
using variables. This program currently draws a face. Does it now? It does. Oh, he looks like he's spazzed out, right? But the eyes are two different sizes. Change the program to use the variable for the size of both eyes and run the code to make sure both eyes are drawn at the same size. Okay, do this. Run the program to see how it works. I see that. My dude needs some help. He, he's like too stressed out. He needs some help here. All right, run the program, see how it works. We did that. Step one's done. Change the program to use the eye size variable. Eye size right here. Okay, and eye size is set to 27. Eye size is used here, but eye size is not used here. So let's copy and paste. Reset run. All right, now he still looks like he's not having a great time. He's making kind of the eh, face. All right, run the program with different values for eye size. All right, so back up at the top now for, on this variable, we can real, really quick change the size of his eyes. The bigger his eyes get, the more nervous he looks. <laughs> I'm going again. Oh, yeah. Now he's seen something he maybe didn't want to see. All right. We'll leave him at that. Sorry, dude. Okay. Lots of challenges here. What do we have? Challenge, challenging image, or changing image. Challenge, changing image. Not a challenge, challenging image, but a changing image. Changing image. All right. Using the variables, draw an image where many of the items rely on a common variable for size or placement. For example... Draw a face with variables controlling the size and or placement of both eyes, ears, and nostrils, or a slice of pizza with variables controlling the size and or placement of the toppings. Once you have your drawing completed, try changing the values of your variables to make sure that the whole image changes together. Okay. All right. So right now, what is it drawing? Two little red circles. All right. Let's make a pizza. So let's grab regular polygon, and I'm going to draw that above here. I'm going to give it three sides, and let's see what that looks like. All right, let's make that a lot bigger. Let's see, slice of pizza, size 50. Let's make it a big piece of pizza. Let's see what 200 does. There we go. Now we're talking. Now we got a pizza. All right. So now let's see. Let's move these pepperoni slices. First, regular polygon. Let's change the color of the pizza because eating a gray pizza might be a little bit weird. Yellow for cheese. That's some bright yellow cheese. Let's try what does like tan look like. What about some brown pizza? Um, light brown. That's not a color. All right, one thing you can do here is we can look up HTML color names. And if it's the W3Schools link, that's the correct one. And then you can go through and find, let's find some pizza. Beige. Let's find some, like, what's some cheese yellow? Cheesy yellow. That corn silk might work. We'll keep that in mind. Khaki. Lemon chiffon. I, I feel so fancy just saying it. Lemon chiffon. I'm going to highlight, control C, head back to my lesson. Lemon chiffon pizza. Would you like some? You would like a slice of lemon chiffon? All right. Let's get, let's get these pepperoni slices in here. Um, let's see. So we've got the Y location. Let's move these down to like not 200, 175 maybe. Okay, 
Let's throw some more, more pepperonis on here. We need ellipses for that. And these have a lot of parameters, and it's adding to the width and the height. I don't want gigantic size 400 pepperoni slices, unless you do. And then in that case, you know, that's fine. Um, let's do, like, let's rename this, like, 1Y. Or no, we can't, can we? We could call it, like, Y1. And then these can be Y1. And then we'll do a new variable. Go to the variables drawer. Uh, we're going to do this one. You've got two different variables. We got declare a variable and assign a variable. In this case, we're declaring what these are. We're going to do a y2. And we'll put these, uh, we'll put another pepperoni slice up here at 62. And then we'll do a Y3. And we'll give it a value of 225. Okay. And then back over to our drawing drawer inside the toolbox. Let's add some more ellipses. Let's get rid of these parameters. So for this one, it's going to be uh, wait. This one's going to be wait. What? Okay. Reset. Run. Y two for one of them, right? Okay, and then these two will do y3, y3. I'm going to add one more. This one will also be y3. And these are going to change. It's going to be, let's see, like 100, 200, and 300. 100, 200, 300. we go let's change where that's located the beauty of your variables you can change that very easily so let's change that what was it control Z is my undo button it was 225 let's try 260 bringing it further down awesome it looks approximately like a pizza slice, right? You got your pepperoni, you've got your lemon chiffon cheese. <laughs> so fancy. All right. They did a much better job on their pizza than I did on mine. Although I don't know about if you handed me a piece of pepperoni pizza and my little tiny pepperonis were jumping around, I might go somewhere else for my pizza. All right, let's see. What's wrong with that pepperoni, man? It keeps moving on me. All right, so far we've only ever assigned a value to a variable once, but did you know, did you know, you can update a variable during a program? Read through the example program we provided, run it a few times to understand how it works, and then attempt to modify the program to draw one of the following images. Uh, if you've been following along with Mr. D for a while, you know we're going to do the hard one. You know we're going to do the hard one. All right. So, obviously, we've got this thing started. So, they're doing the line across. And all you got to do is add 50 to X every time you add a new ellipse. So to do this one, we'll have to add to Y also. So let's go to variables. We're going to grab this, put that here. And then inside this, we'll put a plus, And it's going to be Y plus 50. 
I'm going to control C that. I'm going to move my cursor using my arrow keys on my keyboard. You can see the little cursor blinking right there. Control V. Now let's run the, oh, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Why you no work right? There's the first one. Hmm. I'll be right back. I'm going to check on why that's wrong. I'm back and I feel feel like um, I made a very simple mistake. But simple mistakes are the easiest ones to make. All right. I forgot to say why it gets y plus 50. Now we're cooking with peanut oil. So now all I have to do is control C, work smarter, not harder. Control V for as many times as I want to do this. Reset run. Now they're going all the way down. And I actually have one too many. So I can get rid of that guy. Still have one too many. Get rid of that guy. Reset run. There we go. Aha. So to do the diagonal one, all you really had to do, you didn't have to change the variables. You just had to use them. So down here, you're adding to x each time, and you're adding to y every time. So just making sure that you have x gets x plus 50, y gets y plus 50 between each of your ellipse blocks where x is called and y is called. That's pretty much that one. Da -da -da. And for the next part, we're working on the string variable challenge. And this will be the last one we do together. The next two are kind of on your own, have fun with it, make something cool. Uh, so far, we've only ever assigned a number value to a variable, but did you know that you can give a string value to a variable? Uh, read through the example program we've provided and then modify the program to create new images with different colors. They dropped a modify the program create, or the modify the program to create, code.org, helping you out. If you're watching my videos, I hope you are. Uh, what are the possible colors I can use? For a full list, go to W3 School, CSS Colors. There you go. Same Kind of the same thing we were looking at before with the HTML colors. It's really the same thing. All right. So run. So basically, we can change these colors. So let's take a look at not the color theory, but the color names. So light blue I like. Pull you over here. We're not thinking about the camels anymore. Bye, camels. Thank you for illustrating what camel case is. Camels. Bye, camels. Okay. Crimson. We're going to do, what did we say? Light blue. Reset run. Uh, next color, let's do... Light sea green. I like that. Whoop. Light sea green. I like that. Okay. Light, C, green. Reset, run. We're getting there. All right. Back to color names. Let's do medium purple is cool. Remember to spell it correctly, like I am trying to do. And don't put any spaces. And then finally, let's do orchid. That's a cool one. Again, make sure you spell it right. There we go. Reset, run. There you go. All of them are changed. So anytime you need more colors, you can type in HTML color names or, I guess, click that link on this particular bubble. We'll get All right, finish. That's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this lesson as much as I did. Variables are cool. They save you a lot of time and energy on your programming. It means that you don't have to use as many lines of code. 
oftentimes, and you can use it anywhere in your program, which is pretty cool. Uh, so, you know, if you're doing this at home, choose one of these, abstract art or the nature scene, whichever one you want to do, have fun with it, make something great. Anyway, I'll see you with the next one. For the next one, we'll be looking at lesson six.